Welcome to another edition of the Gold Nose Podcast. I am your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not an insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me. In my opinion, other information comes from the internet. Today is January 3rd, 2020. This is episode number 34. Happy New Year to everyone, and thank you for listening to my podcast. Um, Today, I'm going to start out again highlighting one offensive player and one defensive player. Um, I'm going to take a look at the Sun Bowl. Like I said, anytime that Florida State plays, I like to take 24 to 48 hours to calm down, win or lose. Um, Then I will take a look at a couple of other things. So let me go ahead and get started. Um, My first spotlighted player is going to be Leonard Warner, inside linebacker, Um, 6'4", 240. Uh, Started 2019 out as an outside linebacker. He was not a good fit there. Staff moved him to inside linebacker. Um, He excelled a little bit at that position. He did have some struggles there. Um, In my opinion, I feel like he's a defensive end. With the influx of linebackers linebackers via recruiting, moving him to defensive end would help our pass rusher deficiency. Um, Some of the issues that he had at inside linebacker was covering backs out of the backfield, covering tight ends, dropping um, into zone coverage, He needs to, um, if he's going to stay at that position, he needs to uh, rededicate himself to all areas of his craft. Um, But like I said, I feel like with his size and his speed, he would be a better defensive end than linebacker because they're switching to a 4-3 multiple. And pretty much uh, last year's group and this year's group as far as recruiting they're going to be the ones that better fit that 4-3 multiple scheme so if you slide him down to defensive end i think he can be a uh, serious asset to this team um nfl comparison um i do not have one for him um so i'm going to move on to the next guy which is offensive guard mike arnold 6'5", 349. Obviously, he needs to lose about, I'd say, 25 pounds to get the maximum uh, usage out of his frame. Uh, I think he's a little heavy. You watch his highlights on YouTube. He He's good at the point of attack, but when it comes to just exploding out of his stance and moving a defender, he's not good at that. He catches defenders a lot um what else i think he i think if he works on all areas of his craft he can be a contributor to this team i don't think he is going to be a starter it would take a monumental you know nine months until the opening game um in atlanta against west virginia for in my opinion to for him to be a starter um you know, this coaching staff has to um, totally uh, revitalize and reboot this uh, program. Um, so that's all I got on Mike Arnold. No NFL comparison for him either. Um, Sun Bowl review. I picked uh, Arizona State to win, but the young guys on both sides of the ball for Florida State played well. Black men. I, I, I the previous episode to this one I kind of um hyped him up like he could be the starter man he needs work man he regressed these last couple of games he regressed and um we just need him to um you know rededicate himself in all areas of the game so we can get our team back to where they need to be and I think I think he can do that um, you know, I was, 
I was kind of, I don't know, emotional after that game. Um, I, you know, I really wanted to wait another day to <laughs> record this, uh, this podcast, but hey, man, it is what it is, man. I picked Arizona State to win the game anyway. So, um, what else I got? Um, FSU, let's see. Okay, Dante Lucas, my bad. Dante Lucas got hurt by a teammate. Um, it looked nasty. He's our best offensive guard. Um, hopefully. He can make a full recovery and, um, you know, be healed up by the season opener against West Virginia. Um, Emmett Rice. Emmett Rice uh, had a good game, man. Um, He played pretty well. Um, I think the light has finally come on for him. He still makes mistakes, but, again, he played well. Um, Changing the culture starts now, in my opinion. Um, Mike Novell. Um... You know, he needs to drop the hammer, man. Um, I like what he did. He came in. He talked to every player. He talked to every outgoing coach. You know, he's got all this information. But at the end of the day, you know, strength and conditioning has to be the um, number one focus during this offseason. Because this is not a physically tough team. Um, and, and also getting the most support staff possible, you know, guys that can break down film, um, more, uh, position, I mean, graduate assistants, just more staff to better help your team. Um, Jordan Travis still has awesome speed. He's, um, the arm strength still is an issue. I mean, you saw it in this game, um, you know, he cannot, I don't think he can throw like over 15 yards and maybe 15 yards is being generous as far as with accuracy. I mean, obviously he can throw, but it's not a, like a really accurate ball. Um, but the speed, man, he is super fast for a quarterback and he's just so scary on that read option stuff. Um, so if you're going to do that with him, you already know that. It's going to be a short, intermediate passing game. But he said, Norvell said, this is a West Coast type of offense, more of a pro-style West Coast offense. So that's, to me, that's, again, predicated on short, intermediate passes. And I think Jordan Travis could do that. Um, So we'll see. Um, Scary Terry, um, you got to let that fumble go, man. Um, You know, the game didn't come down to that. Um, you know, the offense didn't play very well. Um, the defense played pretty good. Um, I just wanted to tell him thank you for staying again, believing in this program. Uh, Harlan Barnett actually called a pretty good game. Um, he actually had, uh, players at the right positions. You had safeties playing safety and you had corners playing corner. You had Akeem Dent playing corner, and he played pretty good, man. You had Levante Taylor playing corner. He played pretty good. Um, They actually put Raymond Woody the third out there at safety, and Brandon Gant at strong safety. He played pretty good. Um, So I was kind of I was kind of happy with the defense and just the the coaches realizing that they had put some guys at the wrong position. Um, Amari Gaynor was okay. Um, you know, the, uh, the defensive line was okay. I think Cooper played pretty good. I think Durden played pretty good. Um, obviously we let him score 21 points, so we were not great, but I think this was, this game was probably arguably one of the better defensive efforts, um, of the season. Um, you know, the state of the program now is that you just, you got to hit the reset button, not, not in terms of blowing up the roster or anything like that, but just everything that has been instilled in these guys for the, 
in the Willie Taggart era and even the last year of the Jimbo era. You have to somehow, some way, get those guys to buy into what you're doing. And I think, you know, getting Big Marv to stay and Scary Terry to stay, you know, they're gonna they're gonna have to step up and be leaders. Like I've said in previous episodes. And um I think, you know, like I said, nine and three next year is doable. Granted that we get better offensive line talent, we get a couple of more pass rushers, and um you're gonna have to see what Quayshawn Fuller and Curtis Fan and uh, several of those other guys have to um, what they got to contribute Um, because you just got guys on the roster who are just hogging up a scholarship and we don't know what they're capable of so um, you got to get them in the weight room you got to get them in the film room you got to get them to learn your scheme and we just got to see if this thing can take off, man. And then the boosters, you know, the boosters got to boost, man. It's really that simple. The boosters have to boost. And then the administration has to give every asset um, to Mike Norvell to uh, improve this team. Um, if we can do that, I think the future is bright. Um you know, I just don't, I just don't understand. They kind of lowballed Willie Taggart, man. They kind of lowballed him. Just to be honest, I've been real hard on the dude because he he made some bonehead um, game day decisions, like playing Alex Hornibrook at all, and just usage just usage of timeouts, and just putting personnel in the wrong positions, and. Uh, but he's gone. But I think this season could have been a lot better than what it was. And um, hopefully Mike Novell can, you know, you know, fix all the issues. And I would hope that he would keep Telly Lockett, man. Because this guy is an asset for South Florida. Um, he kept Stanford Samuels uh, the second, the father. He, he He's uh, big time in terms of having those connections in South Florida with high school coaches. Of course, Ron, Ron Dugans, Odell Hagens, you know, keeping some, keeping most of those guys like that, man, was a good move. So I have to applaud Mike Norvell for that. Um, like I said before, just reboot, revitalize, rededicate, and you know, nine and three, man. Nine and three um, is the is the number that we should uh, shoot for. Um, Jordan Young played pretty good. Um, you know, I watched. I've highlighted Jordan Young. He actually ran some pretty good routes in this game. Um, you know, for whatever reason, Blackman couldn't get the ball to him. Um, AJ Lighton. Played well at corner. Um, again, Raymond Woody the third played well. He even did some return stuff, if I haven't already said that. And, you know, offensive line still needs a lot of work. A lot of work. Um, I hate it on Asante Samuel, but he played okay. So, I'm going to be positive for next season. I'm not going to be a Debbie Downer, <laughs> even though I mean it's so easy to do. Um, I'm gonna try to be positive, man. Um, I'm gonna try to go down for the spring game in April, just to get a better feel for this team. Um, so I have to, you know, get all that information going, and then I'm gonna try to do a a, po- a live podcast or. A video podcast for when I go to the spring game. Um, as always, I want to thank people who subscribe to this podcast and um, listen to it faithfully. I really do appreciate it. It's available on YouTube. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Thank you for your support. And as always, go Knowles.